From time immemorial, our people have made progress in their lives because they communicate with each other. For progress of the human race, technology plays an important role in enhancing communication. In the last two decades, the mobile phone technology has been an important development in Malawi and the African continent in general. We wake up today knowing that we can do business, talk to our brothers and sisters. Telecom Networks Malawi, TNM, led the way by introducing mobile phone technology back in 1996. It has continued to drive the mobile phone services as a premier service provider. TNM has connected families, friends and businesses since then while continuously innovating its technologies to offer the best quality network offering. In the last three years, TNM rolled out a network modernization drive that saw huge technological investments and at attaining a network that is cost-effective, has new capabilities, is future-proof and at the same time environmentally friendly. TNM's road to modernization stretches from a complete transformation of the core network, radio transmission to billing systems. A mobile network consists of five major subsystems, radio access network, core network, transmission, value-added systems, billing and charging systems. Radio access network, RAN. This is the interface point through which customers connect to the mobile telephone network to access various mobile services. The RAN consists largely of BSCs, RNCs, BTSs, Node Bs, E Node Bs. The Core Network. This is the central part of the network. It is where voice and data calls are connected. It is also where access to various value added services is provided. Transmission Network This is the transport and connectivity infrastructure that connects various parts of the network across the country. Value Added Systems VAS. The VAS systems provide platforms for implementation and provision of value added services. This is where various innovative ideas are implemented. Billing and charging systems. These systems are used for billing for post services and charging for prepaid services. The core network, VAS. From the basic SMSC, USSDC, and voicemail systems in 1996, TNM VAS systems have evolved to highly innovative and versatile platform, providing a wide range of services such as the SMS services ring back tone, multimedia services, and missed call notification. VAS systems have enabled the implementation of various mobile commercial applications. TNM VAS systems have evolved into a highly innovative and versatile platform providing a wide range of services, like the SMOC Center, which enables affordable text messaging for users. We also have the USSD platform that supports a menu-based, real-time, and two-way communication for users. This supports applications like mobile banking, balance inquiry, mobile money services, and many others. We also have the RBT system, which gives users customized ringing tunes while setting up a call. The ADMS platform simplifies configuration of settings for mobile phones by the operator, as well as providing the operator with the statistics of user devices on the network. We also have the missed call notification system, which alerts the user on who called while the phone was unreachable. Finally, we have the voicemail center, which enables users to exchange stored voice messages. TNM VAS systems have enabled the implementation of various mobile commerce applications, such as mobile money, Bamba, mobile insurance, Moyo Cover, mobile banking, point of sale, POS, airtime credit. The VAS system operates in the signaling layer and takes advantage of the dynamic allocation of the resources unlike voice and data services which require dedicated resources. Therefore, the VAS services 
do not require to separate network as they ride on top of 2G or 3G signaling network layer. In TNM, VAS may take up 25% of signaling resources. SMSC Platform The SMSC is the node which enable customers to send or receive SMSs. All services and systems that use SMS are connected to the SMSC. Example, bulk messaging and SP. The processing speed of the SMSC is limited mainly by the hardware and license capacities measured in TPS. USSDC Platform The USSDC platform supports all systems that are USSD to execute its services. A USSD service uses a code which normally starts with star and end with hash, for example, star 100 hash. The bank's mobile banking, for example, use USSD codes to carry account balance and transfer money. Other services are, as earlier mentioned, Bamba, Boyokava, POS, and Airtime Credit. RBT Platform The RBT Platform provides users with customized ringing tunes specific to their choices. Customers choose a piece of music which they want the caller to hear when calling them. The tunes are chosen by dialing a specific USSD code, for example, star 888 hash. ADMS Platform The ADMS Platform is precisely a tool for the operator, TNM. It is only used by TNM to perform certain functions, for example, to collect and record the number of devices on the network, to send internet settings to TNM customers, to correct SMSC or MMSC numbers on the SIM card. Missed Call Notification Platform The Missed Call Notification System is used to inform the subscriber about a call missed when phone was off or out of coverage. The system uses the information that the system recorded when the subscriber left coverage or had phone switched off to generate SMS. The SMS is then sent to the customer as soon as they get connected again. Voicemail Platform The voicemail platform is used to send voice messages to customers. Customers have inboxes into which voice messages are dropped. The mobile network generates an SMS to inform the customers that they have a voice message in their inbox. Customers would choose to retrieve the voice message or discard it even before playing it. The voice message are triggered by the following conditions. If the called customer does not pick up a call. If the called customers have their phones switched off. If the called customers are out of network coverage. If the called customers choose to reject a call. The evolution of mobile data services is completely transforming user behavior. The focus has moved from developing voice technologies to carry data services, as was in 2G, to developing data technologies to carry much media services, that is voice, data, and video, as it is in 4G. The evolution from 2G to 4G is all about increasing speed for transferring data traffic. Now, this increase in speed is completely transforming the user behavior. For instance, an officer on a busy trip on a business trip in China, can view in real time whatever is happening at his house in Malawi and even open the gate for a visitor. A family doctor will be able to monitor his or her clients in real time and get a test message whenever a client's blood pressure goes beyond normal limits. From a single equipment site in Nimbi in 1996, infrastructure for core network has grown into a full redundant network with two geographical redundancy sites, one in Limbi at TNM Techno Park and another in Lilongwe at TNM Smart Park. In addition to geographical redundancy sites, each core network element has site redundancy through replication of hardware which work either in load sharing or in active standby mode. For instance, in radio transmission, connectivity using traditional methods on copper cables, E1s, had limitations on the number of channels to a 3G node. TNM has now introduced hybrid technology which uses fast Ethernet interfaces on the back hall. Capacity is no longer a limitation to the nodes. We used to have radios which had only have few channels, uh, 
I would say maybe a capacity of uh, an E1 to, to, to an area. And that E1 will be, will be carrying all the traffic which is generated in that area. But nowadays, if you just connect uh, an area with an E1, customers will have uh, uh, difficulties to access their services. And now, nowadays, with the advancement in technology, customers want to have things readily available to them, access things fast. So as TNM strides have been made to make sure that the customers have a uh, quality of service which they demand and they are able to, to enjoy the services uh, on TNM. This investment has translated in faster download speeds for data users on the network. Another innovation is TNM's backup connectivity with the West Coast Marine Cable where international traffic goes through Zambia and Namibia. Traditionally, TNM has been using the East Coast Cable that passes through Mozambique. The two options offer TNM customers reliable backup. For us to connect to the uh, outside world, we need to have links through uh, other countries. Uh, previously, we only had uh, um, our links, terrestrial link through Mozambique and it was a challenge that when once we lose connectivity in Mozambique when they have any outage due to maybe it can be power or faults that occur on the route we used to lose uh, connectivity to the outside world but at the moment we have uh, measures to make sure that customers enjoy connectivity on international throughout the year also on the table is the secondary backup for international connectivity with this VSAT. All international roaming, voice and data traffic is fully backed up resulting in better resilience. Apart from having the microwave radios, we also have fiber. And uh, normally uh, microwave radios, they are uh, challenges when they are to weather elements such as rain and when it's too hot, the radiation uh, affected but in fiber uh, since it's it's uh, technology which is light passing through a glass and is not exposed to any elements uh, of weather you are assured of good quality all the time and also the capacities the bandwidth that fiber can support far much surpass uh, the capacities that microwave radios support as such customers in TNM are assured of good quality and high class services through the uh, fiber network which TNM has across the country. Indoor Arcatel based transmission station has limited capacity plus recurrent faults. This old technology has also required continuous air conditioning usage leading to high operational costs. The technology required someone to physically go on site to make any system upgrades to capacity. Introduction of Huawei-based stations, which are software-defined, has changed all this. Today, upgrades can be undertaken remotely. Unlike the old equipment, where one module has a maximum of two carriers, the modern modules of same size can now support up to eight carriers. Due to the fact that we are using feederless equipment, meaning that we no longer have the traditional RF feeders with huge losses in it, we now use what we call re remote radio heads which are mounted on the tower, meaning we now feed those remote radio heads with fiber optic cables and our RF cabling is much reduced. This allows us to increase the power and reduce the losses in terms of our radio coverage. Outdoor BTS does free cooling and keep temperature within operating range. This has resulted in low operational costs. With the new generation BTSs not using air conditioning, there is now a reduction in carbon dioxide emission into the environment. The other advantage of the outdoor BTS is the ability to run on batteries, leading to a reduction in running hours for generators and cutting carbon emissions. We've also recently implemented what we call hybrid generators which use 
batteries, battery technology that allows us to deep charge the batteries and to quick charge them. This means rather than running a generator for 24 hours, seven days a week, we now run generators between five and six hours and then run the equipment using our battery technology. This has huge implications for us from a savings point of view, giving us 50 to 70% saving in operational expenses. The new feederless BTSs are now connected to antenna using fiber links, unlike the old generation that used cables, which resulted in power losses and small transmission power. This eventually leads to improved coverage. 30% of the sites are feederless. Capacity is increased by 120 to 150 percent for feederless BTS sites in rural areas, with improved coverage of 25 to 30 percent with the same tower infrastructure. For the macro BTS, the power saving percentage is around 50 percent. For the feederless BTS, is about 32 percent. We've been able to implement a single RAN, meaning that the current equipment only requires one ba baseband unit and through that one baseband unit we can have 2G services, 3G services and even LTE, long-term evolution, 4G as, as it's known in the future. So we really have state-of-the-art equipment that is, that is future-proof and will take us into the future. Introduction of solar-powered BTSs in areas without ESCOM power previously were running on generators 24 hours. With solar, communities are now spared from generator noise and carbon emissions into the environment has been reduced. The power saving percentage is around 60% to 70%. We have reached up to 90% for Pasani in 2013. The introduction of solar power has allowed us to make savings of between 60 to 70 percent in fuel usage. Previously we would run a generator 24-7. Now we only use them for five to six hours a day to charge our batteries. We then use our battery technology to run our, our sites. This has reduced our carbon footprint and obviously has huge benefits for the country and the people of Malawi. The modernization has also seen the introduction of hybrid generators that has intelligence to store power and has reduced running hours from 24 to 5. The old generation of generators could not store power and provide when it is needed. These innovations have brought about operational efficiencies resulting in affordable tariffs on the network. Local switching while previously all calls would require to come to the switching center in Blanta or Lilongwe to be routed to the targeted destinations. Another benefit of our modern radio access network is the ability to do local switching. Local switching means a call that is established in Rumpi is actually switched in Rumpi. We no longer have to, have to switch it through to Mzuzu, through to Lilongwe, but that we can now save transmission equipment and ensure cost savings in terms of transmission capacity and equipment. Billing systems is another key feature in the mobile phone technology. A new billing system, the Online Charging System, OCS 3.3, has since been adopted for flexibility in terms of charging for data. The new system replaced the OCS 1.1 installed in 2009. OCS 3.3 has got uh, capacity for 4 million subscribers and 50 million pins. Pins are the vouchers, the numbers that when you scratch a uh, scratch card, uh, you enter a pin. So it's got that uh, capacity uh, up to uh, 50 million. With OCS 3.3, TNM can charge per status of customers, charging for specific URLs such as free Skype, or free WhatsApp services and many others. We are focusing on data charging, uh, as you know, that uh, everybody is offering uh, voice charging, SMS, and other services. But now TNM is focusing on data so that the customer can have a very good experience in terms of data and ensuring that the customers are charged uh, correctly. Uh, 
the enhancements here or the new features include charging for volume, charging based on duration, and also charging based on URL. That's charging based on the website you visit. Another feature is the ability to enable charging on data based on quality of service. For instance, charging differently, that is slow internet to fast internet. We have also invested in technology that monitors the network performance and elements around the clock. This is done at the Network Management Center located in Lilongwe. The Network Management Center is got four, four areas of concentration. Uh, it does before, uh, fault management, performance management, change management, and the um, access management. So basically, initially, uh, the company had stand standalone systems where the, 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 the systems were monitored from different places. Like billing, they would monitor their own equipment. Radio access network, they would monitor their own equipment. Um, a call, which is the switching part of the network, they would also monitor their own equipment. IT, uh, IT services and stuff, every, everybody was doing their own part. So what the company did was to make sure we get a solution which is going to integrate all these systems together so that they can be monitored from one point. So that's how the network management center was born. So when the alarm comes, it's captured. So we have a trouble ticketing system. Uh, a ticket is opened and it's assigned to the owner of the system. So this process, when the alarm comes, it's, it's supposed to be managed within a minute or two. So a ticket is opened, is sent, the owner gets the ticket. He's given a time, we have uh, policies and procedures in place, so it's given a time. We call it medium to repair. So if that time passes, the person who's working on that ticket is supposed to escalate to the next level. Today, TNM boasts of a superior network offering that is flexible for adaptation to emerging technology, agile, and has an enhanced capacity to handle increasing traffic. It is a completely different experience. Be part of the premier subscribers and experience our superior network offering. We have not only invested for today, our enhanced network capabilities and agility positions us to efficiently manage tomorrow's mobile phone technological needs.